whatever that you read. You read travel magazines, you look at pictures, get inspired, understand different worlds. Kerala has a life of uh, traveling and exploration. I'm sure uh, such a magazine will find great uh, readership in, in this part of the world. So first of all, I would love to thank you for accepting our invitation to the Kerala Explorer magazine's interview request and you showed up without showing any hesitation or any, any, any kind of apprehension and I must really thank you for that first of all. Thank you so much. So shall we move on? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. So it was your movie Akni Sakshi that brought you into limelight and it's been almost 20 years now. So how do you view the transformation of Malayalam cinema as a whole? Not just the cinema, not just my cinema or generally the cinema, but everything has changed over the last 20 years or so. And it has been very rapid. The progression had been so intense in the last uh, decade or so. And uh, with each year, the changes around you are so fast that cinema is as being part of um, society's imagination uh, it will have to catch up in the area of cinema everything has changed like the technology the business the nature of the audience sensibilities uh, most of the players everything has changed so i find it uh, exciting you know to be working today uh, because there is an entirely uh, new culture happening in the uh, in the film industry now and the many stories which we till now thought unacceptable or unworkable in movies are able to find place you know and then the market has also been very interestingly opened up with the multiplexes and with the television, with the internet. So yeah, I mean, there had been a sea change and uh, I'm happy that uh, I'm still able to produce for this changed world in the movies. You always had very strong women characters in your movie. Let it be uh, Shobna in Agni Sakshi or even uh, Shobna ma'am uh, or even uh, Anna Gustin in uh, The Artist. Do you do that deliberately or just is it that just comes naturally? No, I don't do it deliberately. Mm -hmm. I think it uh, happens um, probably as a reaction to whatever I see in the society, I see in the industry which is quite a male dominated area so subconsciously some of the stories I pick up uh, becomes centered on women which is only natural I mean in an in a fair world this question shouldn't have even come up True. because uh, women and men share almost half and half in this society and still we feel surprised that a woman gets a prominent place in the movies. So that's how the situation is. Um, probably because I happen to use a lot of literary work as my, um, as a basis of my movies. There are very strong characters in, in literature uh, with women. You know, probably more than men. Some of the more beautiful characters that I have come across are women, like Agnizakshi, or um, so many stories of Mathevi Kuti, or you know, many other literary works. So it becomes a, a natural process for me to uh, focus on these areas, these individuals, and uh, personally, I find the life of an Indian woman especially a Malayali woman, full of interesting contradictions. You know, to live in a society like this and work, uh, being open to the changing world, yet being um, restricted in so many subtle ways, you know. It's not out there, but it is very subtle and inside. 
So I find that very interesting and these characters uh, reflect the women I met in my life, like from my mother to my wife to my daughter to my friends, my colleagues. So yeah, I mean, it happens naturally, it is not deliberate, but I think it is important that uh, every sensitive artist should be, um, uh, you know, uh, observant of these kind of a contradiction that exists in society. Most of your movies have been reinterpreted from novels. But except for Ibide or Ritu, where an original screenplay is used, so how do you differentiate between these two? You know, using the novel while creating an original screenplay. Um, both are not much different actually, because in both ways, director is a participant in the authorship of the film. You know, even if it is Lalitambi uh, Andarjanam's beautiful novel, it is as much mine. Because the way, I, I like the way you use the word reinterpretation. So, when that reinterpretation comes, there is something original that you put in. That original comes from your life, your observation of the society around you. The values that you want to speak about in the film. Because Agni Sakshi could be filmed in an entirely different way by someone else. You know, and it could be also be faithful to the text. So my attempts have been always to uh, create something which I find in as my world in Agnesakshi, rather than being faithful to the novel. Because there is no point being faithful to the novel, because the novel is observed and experienced by different people in different ways. Your Agni Sakshi or your Kazakh and Dihasa may not be my Kazakh and Dihasa because there is something very subjective going on in experiencing art. So I use that same logic in recreating it, reinterpreting it because I put myself into it and all that. So uh, even if it is based on a uh, literary work or an original work, the process is the same. It's not that I take from some screenplay writer, lock, stock and barrel, something and doing it. No, I start with him right from the start, right from the genesis of the story. And I integrate with him or her about the characters, how they progress and what are the conflicts, how the plot evolves, everything. So it's as much mine again. Um, it's sometimes you know you want you read something and you you want it to be interpreted by yourself in a different medium like movie so that desire becomes so strong and then you get on to making it but having said that I admit not every book that I read is possible to be interpreted like that you know because movie is a different medium literature is something else so there is inevitable conflicts and uh, sometimes you arrive at uh, something which is beautifully adaptable to movies uh, so sometimes you look for some theme say for example I wanted to talk about the changing uh, you know human conflicts in the background of the evolving IT world in Kerala, in Ruthu. I don't have a literary thing to base on, you know, there is nothing written like that. But I want to talk about this because I have I've seen people, I have talked to people and I'm interested in it. So I need to build a story, a screenplay and then make it. So I took the help of a very talented writer called Joshua Newton mm -hmm. and kind of it was a journey with him mm -hmm. and we, we arrived at a screenplay called Ruthu. So that's how it So tell me about your latest venture, Hey Jude. I can't, I can't say much about Hey Jude because mm -hmm. we are still holding back the publicity and uh, we are still holding back and uh, not revealing much. 
Uh, I can just say that it is a, a very interesting subject. It talks about a person called Jude, uh, who is very special and who goes through a journey again uh, to find his himself um, and how to live life uh, happily. He meets several people in the journey and then that's how it proceeds. It's a very life changing and life affirming movie. And uh, it has uh, Nivin Pauly and Trisha in their lead roles. It also has some other wonderful actors like Siddiq and uh, Vijay Menon and so on. So it is finished, the movie is shot. Uh, we are hoping by Christmas we'll be able to release that. You have chosen an exotic location like Goa to picturize this movie. So how does this place contribute to the soul of the movie? That's a good question. Uh, every location is in that way important to a film. I didn't go in search of an exotic location. I went along with the characters who traveled to a place, a place where they had a certain change in their life. So this could be different places, you know, all my film life, film career, I've been journeying with these people, you know. If it was Agni Sakshi, it was an entirely different world that you or I live in. It's a 1940s or 50s uh, Rishikesh and uh, some old Nambudri households in Kerala um, and, and so on. For Akali, I was in search for the old uh, Anglo-Indian neighborhoods, which is usually people film it in Kochi and all that. But I went uh, up to uh, Barnasheri in Tarasheri and to the unique uh, ambience there. And uh, part of it in Calcutta. And afterwards, when I did English, it was all in England where these characters were journeying. In every day, it was in the US. So, it depends where are these people going, where are these characters going. Um, in Ritu, they were coming back to Kerala mm -hmm. from California and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it's not about being exotic or being beautiful locations. Mm -hmm. It is that the ambience that they live in mm -hmm. contributes so much to their evolution as characters and how the plot evolves. So in Jude, they are traveling from Kochi to Goa mm -hmm. and back mm -hmm. and back again in Goa. Mm -hmm. So these kind of journeys actually make uh, huge changes in uh, the psyche of the people. And uh, that's how it is in. So we are talking about locations. So, uh, well, does a location play a character in your movie? Absolutely. That the location actually create a certain ambience to the characters, also to the in the audience mind, and then it works. But the challenge is to not use the location as a you know a postcard background, postcard picture, postcard background, which we see in a lot of mainstream movies. Mm -hmm. They go to Switzerland for a song, uh, or I don't know where South America for something, or. Those kind of things I don't believe in. I don't want it as a picture postcard thing. Mm -hmm. I want the life of it. Say, for example, in in every day, uh, sorry, in uh, English. English, it was shot in London. It was not to show London in a postcard image way. Mm -hmm. It was also to show the life in London, especially the Malayali life in London, the underbelly of it, mm -hmm. even the dirty parts of it. The kind of places that they were living is very, you know, squalid uh, lifestyle, like Satal or East Ham, places like that are very crowded and uh, it's not your typical London. So I wanted that. Or when it when I did uh, uh, every day, it was in Atlanta, not in New York or Los Angeles or not such places, but Atlanta has a very special character. It has its its own kind of a uh, a large small town and with its life and all that, a certain loneliness about it, certain dryness and winteriness. So a filmmaker actually goes in search of the 
inner soul of a city not the touristy thing you know i would like that do you follow a signature style when it comes to creating movies oh absolutely i think i have been very serendipitous in choosing actors finding locations getting investors all that had been great uh, serendipitous some people have even remarked uh, like that you know just for example um, um the location in uh, uh, akale was uh, you know after many journeys to cochin to find a place and kollam uh, all those areas where anglo indian or portuguese uh, 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 ex people were living and i couldn't find i was traveling somewhere else to to mangalore to by a kannur and i just have to pass by a neighborhood called barnasheri and then you know there it is everything just laid out for me right. or mostly in casting you know some of the very interesting casting i have done is just just you meet a person you think that ah oh, yeah she's she's the right one oh, okay. you know right. yeah a lesson that you learnt in life which had a positive influence on your cinemas almost every incident almost every incident you are a, what is a filmmaker doing a filmmaker is trying to create a different world visually and orally for the audience right so he has to put everything in and all that you see you experience you hear you think everything goes into it so and i consider that everything of that is positive everything is positive about it uh, that's how a filmmaker works and his his attempt it is to create that world so he's he's a kind of god himself person your movie is enriched with visual elements like a grey hue in ore kadal or that glass figurines and glass frames in the movie agal agale agale so how do you explain this affinity towards artistic frames because it's a visual medium it's a visual medium yeah and you have to speak through the visuals and the sounds sounds you might not 